Hello, everyone. It is good to be in the house of the Lord. It is good for God's children to be in the house of the Lord. Welcome here. We welcome also uh, various people on Zoom that are joining us. We are glad you are here as well. Um, I think to begin, we will stand and we will turn around and greet each other in the way that we can. So a wave, an eye smile, whatever works. We will uh, remain standing if you can. Actually, first I'm going to light the candle so you can sit down. Now, please stand and we will sing together, God of grace and God of glory. Um, as soon as the words come up. We are glad to be together on a Sunday morning. Let's take um, a moment to look at the bulletin. Um, hmm, Rick, can you get me a bulletin? <laughs> I actually have everything written down here, so I think I'll be fine. Um, today, as most of you know, um, we do have a congregational meeting and uh, right after the service to vote on the associate pastor position. Uh, just note that all are welcome and you can all participate in the discussion, but only members can vote. Um, and we'll take just a few minutes after the service to have a break, but not uh, long, we will begin promptly. Uh, then looking ahead to the week, um, somebody pointed out that I, I made a typo and there is not a congregational meeting next week, it is today. Uh, Bible study uh, carries on on Wednesdays over Zoom, 
And as you can see in the middle of the bulletin, there are a whole host of service opportunities. Uh, there's a family that needs meals. Uh, our worship services could use more musicians and PA people. Uh, the sidewalks need to be uh, shoveled when uh, there's a snowfall. And there's a family that's looking for a Christmas tree. So um, if you can help in, uh, help in any way, uh, find a way to plug in and speak to the appropriate people. Also just want to make a note that uh, your, your church uh, directories are still in your mailboxes. If you haven't picked it up yet, please do. After this week, I will be mailing out the remaining ones. So today is Memorial Sunday, and we do this every year. And some of you um, might wonder why we do this, because it's actually sometimes pretty hard. Um, we will take some time a bit later on to remember those that we have lost, and we will light candles, and we will speak words and see photos. Um, but I just want to remind you of our theme today, which is bearing one another's burdens. And uh, as Christians, we are privileged and we have an obligation to bear each other's burdens. And so um, that is our task. It is too hard to do it alone. We bear it together. Let's pray together as we prepare our hearts. We gather today to worship you, God, even in the face of death and grief. We worship God, the creator who gives us life, Jesus, who died and rose again, and the Holy Spirit, who sighs with us in our sorrow. We gather in gratitude to comfort each other and to name the hope that we have for this life and the life to come. Amen. We'll sing another song now, and I invite you to stand again if you are able. Jesus calls us here to meet him. I'm going to call the children to the front if you would like to join me up here for those of you who are with us today. And if there's any on Zoom, hello, kids on Zoom, you can also take a look 
at the screen a little closer because I'm going to need your help today. Come on up. Hello, hello. Hi, Summer. Hi, Catherine. Good to see you both. Hi, Michael and Thomas, whichever one is which. And Sasha. Good to see you guys. You guys doing all right? Yeah? You guys having a good week? Yeah, that's good. All right. I want to do a little experiment today. And I think I'm going to need your help. You see this right here? This is a magnet, okay? And it's, it's, it's actually quite heavy. I just needed something that was kind of heavy. And this seemed like it was a good option. Now this magnet probably weighs, I don't know, a few pounds. And do you think if I were just to plop it here, it would float? <laughs> no, it wouldn't? Okay, let's try. Oh, oops, <laughs> you're right, it didn't. <laughs> hmm. Now, if I were to want to hold it up, what would I need to make? How could I hold it up? It's not just gonna, you know, yeah. A, a big crane, yeah. With, with forks, yeah. That, you know, that is really good idea. I just don't have a crane. That, and that would be kind of hard to build, but if I don't want to hold it up, you know, above the floor, could I build maybe an, an elevator? Yeah, Sasha, these are hard. To, I'm looking for simple, real simple solutions. Um, how about how about like a bridge or a table? Out of bricks? Yeah, that would definitely hold this magnet. Now, what if I told you the only thing I have here today is spaghetti? I, I don't know. This morning, I was just thinking, for some reason, I'm going to need spaghetti at church. And, and I brought some spaghetti. Is spaghetti a good thing to build a table or a bridge out of? <laughs> no? Okay. Well, let me... Let, here, I've got these two pieces here. I'm going to put them like this. So if we want to put this piece, have it right here. I, you know, I think like... Maybe one piece of spaghetti is is, is probably good, eh? Let's try this. Okay. Do you think that this will hold? No, why not? Not at all? You think it's too weak? Yeah, okay, should we try? Oh, no, okay. Wow, well, I didn't break it, but let, here, let's try it this way. Oh, man. That is not, uh, it's not working like I hoped. Hmm. What, what do you think we'd have to do in order to make it stand? Okay, but what if we only have spaghetti? What if this is the only thing we have? What, what could we do to make it stronger? You, you say more, okay, that's, that's a good idea. Okay, two spaghetti. This will work, right? Calvin, you said more, this is more. Will this hold this up? <laughs> you don't think so? Okay, let's try. Oh, oh. <laughs> it, it actually broke this time. Oh, that's not good. Um, hmm. How, like you said more, how many more do you think we need? Three, three. <laughs> okay, we, we did one. We Try to. Should we do a little bit more than three? Like how many? Like a whole handful? Okay. Let, let, let me see what I can get. How about this many? Do you think this could hold it? Do you think so? Okay. Let's try. You think this could hold this heavy magnet? Okay. Let's try it. It did it, yay! <laughs> so the key here, right, was that more of the spaghetti when put together was stronger than just one by itself or two by itself, right? Yeah, today we're gonna be talking about something called burdens. And that's kind of a big one. But you know, we all have things in life that we carry, like things that are hard in life. 
And sometimes we try to do things on our own. But the, the Bible reminds us that we are not alone. God is always with us, and we are part of a community, our family, our friends, the people in church, who are there to help and support us. And so we're going to read today from a book in the Bible called Galatians. And in Galatians, there's a, a guy named Paul who was writing to a group of Christians and telling them to carry one another's burdens. Kind of like the spaghetti, right? When they all got together, then they could carry a really heavy thing, a really heavy burden. And it's similar for us too, that when we have things in our life that are hard for us to carry, we need to remember we're not supposed to do it alone. And we can do it together in community. And when we come together as a community, we're so much stronger and able to carry these things up that we couldn't do by ourselves. Thank you for helping me with the experiment. I'll just leave that there for now. And why don't we say a prayer, okay? Our God, we thank you for this day. And I thank you for these children who are here today and who are joining us over Zoom. We thank you so much for your love for them. And I pray, God, that they would grow up to know that they are part of a large community, community that is there to, to help support each other, that we can help each other when things get hard in life. And when things seem too heavy for us to carry alone. Thank you for your love and give us a great week. Amen. Amen. So after the service, if you want, we could come back here and you can test, like, what's the minimum amount of spaghetti that you could use to hold this thing up, okay? We can do that after the service is done. But for now, you can go back to your seats. And just so you guys know, there is some coloring stuff in the back room there if you ever need any of that. Um, and uh, hope you enjoy the service. <laughs> I'll be reading, reading from Galatians 6, 1 to 6 from the NIV. Brothers, if someone is caught in a sin, you are you with, uh, you who are spiritual should restore him gently, but watch yourselves and you also may be tempted. Carry each other's burdens, and in this way you will be you will fulfill the law of Christ. If anyone thinks he is something, when he is nothing, he deceives himself. Each one should test his own actions. Then he can take pride in himself without comparing himself to somebody else. For each one should carry his own load. Anyone who receives instructions in the word must share all good things with the instructor, the word of the Lord. Okay. Oh, am I coming to now? Okay. <laughs> well, we'll go with this, Mac. Uh, Mac, that's all right. Well, good morning again. It is good to see you, and it is so uh, good to gather today on what is actually the last day of the Christian calendar. I'm not sure if you are aware of this, but Advent actually kicks off the church year for us. And so this day where we also remember those who have passed, 
in this past year and just in general in our lives uh, is a special day for us to mark. And so it's good to gather together. And again, everyone who's joining on Zoom, it is also good to be with you and see you on the screen, although we can't all see you, but uh, uh, we know you are there and we know you're joining. Today's our last week of wrapping up this series that we've called the One Another series. One another because we've been looking at passages that deal and have this word alelon, which in Greek means one another. There's a lot of them in the New Testament. That, that word appears about 100 times, and we've only chosen seven of those to explore. And the reason being that those are passages that speak to community and, and how we can be community together. And so if you've been with us over the past six weeks, you've heard some of these uh, instructions or commands from writers of the New Testament to the church. Commands like be devoted to one another, serve one another, encourage one another, speak truth to one another. Those are some of the examples that we've explored so far. And now we've come to the end of this, which of course is not the end because there's so many other passages, but for us now at this time, it is the end. And it really fits into what we're doing today as we remember those who have passed on and share the losses that we've experienced. This reminder to carry one another's burdens, to bear one another's burdens. I wanna take a quick look at the passage that we find in Galatians. Um, I, I do have just a couple slides there, Andrew, if you could throw those up. Um, and, and we just want to go through a few of these verses. Galatians is a book that Paul wrote, and Galatia is a region, well, it was a region. So he's writing to a group of churches, a, a group of Christians about all kinds of different things. And of course, one, some of the, um, um, some of the, the, the more familiar uh, things that we find in Galatians are the fruits of the spirit, right? That's one of the places that we find that. And in Galatians chapter 6, we find a few very interesting verses about what it means for us to carry one another's burdens or bear with one another. Paul writes, brothers and sisters, if someone is caught in a sin, you who live by the Spirit should restore that person gently. But watch yourselves that you, may, may, that you also may be tempted, or you also may be tempted. And then he says in verse 2, Carry each other's burdens, and in this way you will fulfill the law of Christ. If anyone thinks they are something they are not, they deceive themselves. Each one should test their own actions. Then they can take pride in themselves alone, without comparing themselves to someone else. For each of you should carry their own load. It seems a little bit contradictory, this passage. Because first Paul starts off by saying, we should carry one another's burdens. And then by the end of it, Paul is saying, oh, uh, if you go to the next slide there, by the end of it, Paul is saying that each one should carry their own load. Now, this might sound contradictory, but what Paul is saying is here is that there is a balance when it comes to community, that there is a responsibility for us as we live into community, and there's also a responsibility on the community as it comes to us. But what does that look like? What does this mean? Well, one of the most interesting this passage that I find is in verse 3. And in verse 3, we say, yeah, Paul writes, if anyone thinks they are something when they are not, they deceive themselves. You know, if we want to be a community that carries one another's burdens, the first step is knowing what those burdens are. And we have a tendency, a habit in the church to come on a Sunday morning and put on a face. It's not unique to the church. It's not unique to Christians because every day of our lives, if you are on any kind of social media, we know what it's like to try to put on a face, to present an image to the world that my life is going pretty good. And often when we show up to Sunday morning, you know, there isn't the space, there isn't the time. We might not feel comfortable to let people in well, we to what's going on in our lives. Mm -hmm. And so we cover ourselves with yeah. layers. Uh, layers that we might call pretense or a facade. 
to let the world know that there's nothing going on underneath. And yet Paul writes to the church here in verse 3. And if anyone thinks they are something they are not, they deceive themselves. How often do we allow ourselves to be deceived because of our fear of what others might say? Or because of what we've experienced in a community where we've tried to open ourselves up but have been rejected or disappointed? How much easier, right, is it to come on a Sunday morning and, and cover up what's going on to only let people see what's clean and what's proper? But the first step, if we really want to be a community that carries one another's burdens, is something we call vulnerability. And vulnerability is a two-way street. We here as a church, as a community, have a huge responsibility to create a space where people can walk in and feel like they can be themselves. And feel like the layers that they put on aren't necessary. Because when we see what's underneath, we're going to love them. We have that responsibility to create safe spaces, to create brave spaces where people can share what's going on in their lives. And that might not happen on a Sunday morning. That might happen in a care group. That might happen when going for coffee with somebody. That might happen in our sharing time, but it can take many forms. One of our deepest desires as, as a pastoral care team is that this happens in different ways and in different places that even our children would grow up in a community knowing that they can express who they are and not be afraid or not be ashamed of what's going on in their lives. If we don't, if we aren't a community uh, that is vulnerable on an ongoing basis, then, then we can't also be a community that carries one another's burdens. But when we do strive towards that, right? When, when we do strive to be that as a community, there's also a responsibility on each of us. To say, you know, these layers that we keep piling on to, to stop people from seeing what's underneath, it's actually making me kind of warm. Would you like to play upstairs or downstairs? <laughs> and the heat's just going to build up. And the things that are happening underneath are just going to get hotter and hotter and hotter until we finally just have to either rip it off or we suffer the heat. And so one of the biggest challenges for us, and it's a challenge for me too, is to allow people to see what's going on underneath. One of the biggest things that I have learned, and, and we can take this, the, the slide off at this point. One of the biggest things that I have learned when it comes to vulnerability is that there is always somebody else going through what I'm going through as well. I've opened up in this church and, and in other Christian communities about my own struggles. You know, it's, it's not always the place on a Sunday morning to share everything that's going on in your life, but, but I found people who were willing to listen. And every time I've shared, I've gotten that understanding that, oh yeah, we know what you're going through. And that was totally opposite to what I thought because every time I'm wanting to take off the layers and expose what's underneath, I have this fear that I'm the only one who's going through this, that nobody else is going to understand it. Even worse, the community that I'm a part of is going to judge me <laughs> and look at me and say, oh, oh, how can he be a Christian? How can we, he be a pastor? But I've learned in my own experience that we are never alone. And, and the Bible reminds that uh, us about that uh, often. There, there's nothing new under the sun. There's no temptation we face that is uncommon to mankind. We have these similar experiences, and the only reason that we don't think so is because we do try to cover it up. There's always somebody else who's going through what you are going through. 
might not be the exact same thing, but someone who can relate. The other thing I've learned is that everybody has something. Look to the people beside you, behind you, on, on Zoom there, regardless, everybody has something. Everybody has a burden. Now, it, it's not the same one, but everyone's got something that they deal with probably lifelong. I, I have found no person, no Christian <laughs> who has ever claimed to me that they just go through life without any worries, without any burdens, without any problems. We all have something. And, and if that's the case, right, if everything you go through, somebody else in this world, in this community is also going through it, and if everyone's got something, then that understanding might help us to actually open up and be authentic with what we're going through, to allow people to see what's underneath. And the hope is that as we create a community that is okay with vulnerability, that we can then carry one another through the things that we go through. That we can share the burden that we're dealing with. And so, uh, you know, my own struggles with addiction. If I know that you know it, and I come to you and ask for you to pray for me, I know I'm not carrying it alone anymore. It's no longer a secret, but it's out there. And I know that you are thinking of me and you are um, uh, appealing to God for me. This is no longer is something that I have to carry alone. And whatever the case is, whatever the burdens that we are bearing, when we are able to no longer hold them ourselves, but even take a piece off and go to someone and say, can you, can you carry this with me? And to somebody else and say, can you take a piece of this? I can't do it alone. And another piece, can you take that and walk with me? Then it no longer becomes only on our shoulders. And just like this example, as simple, right, as childlike as it is, when we carry things together, we are so much stronger. I find it interesting that the things Paul writes about, you know, 2,000 years ago, are things that we are dealing with today. And he is reminding the church that we have a task. We have a responsibility to bear one another's burdens. And that's not always fun when you're the one who gets all the burdens dumped on you. <laughs> like all of these one another commands, it only works when we do it one another, when we do it together as a community. And as I am able to share my burdens with someone and someone is able to share their burdens with me, then together we can lift each other up. Brothers and sisters, if someone is caught in sin, you who live by the spirit should restore that person gently. But watch yourselves or you may also be tempted carry each other's burdens. And in this way, you fulfill the law of Christ. When Jesus came, he set an example for believers. An example of what it meant to live in the kingdom of God. Jesus was the most human human there ever was, who showed us what reconciliation looks like, what hope looks like, what care looks like, and, and most of all, what love looks like. And Jesus, when he was asked, you know, what are the greatest commandments? He, he said, well, the first is love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. That's how he wrapped up the whole Old Testament law. These are the most important things. When we bear one another's burdens, we are living out a command to love one another. That, that's how it gets practical. That's how it gets real. That when we struggle with addiction, we just say to someone, I can't do this alone. I need you to hold me accountable. I need someone that I could talk to. And, and when we're struggling with, with mental health, again, we have someone to say, it's okay. What you're going through is okay. 
and we're going to walk this journey with you. Or when someone's struggling with job loss or making ends meet, we as a community say, hey, the meals are going to show up. We got it. We're going to carry this together. No matter what the case, no matter what the burden, as we live out bearing one another's burdens, we actually live out the fulfillment of Christ's law, to love God and to love one another. I don't know if you remember the passage where Jesus says, invites actually all to come to him. Come to me, those who are weary and heavy burdened, and I will give you rest. We as the hands and feet of Jesus, as we live out the commands of Christ, are able to give that same invitation to a weary world, a weary world. Come, come you who are weary and heavy burdened. Come to Jesus, come to the church and find a place where you can open up and be yourself and where others will carry you along. Let's pray. God, I want to thank you for this day, for your goodness. God, I know this morning everyone is going through something. Nobody's life is perfect, even if our Facebook feeds seem so. We're all dealing with something. And I know, God, that it's not always the time and space just to share everything, what's going on in our lives, but God, I pray for our community that we would be able to model a healthy vulnerability, that we would be able to create safe spaces where in conversation we can let go of some of the burdens that we're carrying, where we can undo some of the layers and, and show people what is happening truly underneath. God, I pray for courage. Pray for patience. And I pray, God, that in this community, the love that you have shown us would be passed on as we bear one another's burdens. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I'm going to invite Crystal and Kareem to lead us in one more song uh, as we reflect on these words and also prepare for a time of remembrance. song is, Will You Let Me Be Your Servant?
Thank you, Green and Crystal, for leading us in that song. As we said already, today is Memorial Sunday, the last day of the Christian calendar, or the last Sunday of the Christian calendar. And as we anticipate the birth of Jesus, we pause to remember those we have lost in this past year. Over the past few weeks, we've sent out uh, announcements or, or reminders for all of us to uh, um, send in names and pictures of those in our families and in our lives who have passed away in the last year. If you, if you didn't get that chance to respond, uh, that's okay. What we're going to do is we're going to show those folks. We're going to light candles for them. And then we're going to invite anybody who wants to also come to the front to light candles, whether that be for people who have been mentioned, people who have not, or people that have passed away, regardless of the year, right? Just people who we continue to carry in our hearts. Oh, I forgot my this. Andrew, if you could pull up the PowerPoint slides. Whenever we come face to face with death, we are reminded of humanity's greatest enemy. But we are also encouraged by the hope of what Christ has done in overcoming death. And, th and that's why we pause, right? That's why we have funerals. That's why we have memorial services and Memorial Sunday to remember that death is not the end, but that in Christ we have resurrection life. So as we see pictures, hear names, and remember those who have passed this last year, I also invite us to hope knowing that some of these very difficult, some of these also um, came with a sense of peace. And so all these we lift up to our God in remembrance. Elizabeth Reimer Friesen passed away on November 23rd, 2020, the age of 99. Elizabeth was the uh, mother of Kareem, Friesen Lowen, mother-in-law to Rick, and grandma to Ben and Jess Lowen. Edna Boyd passed away on January 18th, 2021. Edna was a cousin to Rick and Alf Lowen and a longtime member at Sterling. Helena Gunter. Born January 25th, 1932, and passed away on January 19th, 2021. Helena was the mother of Mary Wall, who's part of our church. Ludwig Eck, born in 1927 and passed away on February 13th, 2021. Ludwig was my opa, and uh, opa to my wife, Jessica and Ur Opa, as we say in German, to our Clara. Eva Catherine Neufeld. Eva was the mother to Linda Parks and mother-in-law to Don Parks. Born on January 5th, 1934. Passed away on March 16th, 2021, the age of 87. Shanae Short passed away on April 2nd, 2021, at the age of 24. Shanae was a friend of Rebecca Jansen, who's part of our church, a former housemate of hers, and a traveling partner during their time with MCC SALT program. Helen Wall, born March 23rd, 1930. Passed away on June 2nd, 2021, the age of 91. Helen was the mother of Gladys Rich, grandmother to Sarah and Stephen Dick, great grandmother to Calvin and Evie Dick. Peter Craker, born March 1st, 1934, and passed away on June 9th, 2021. Peter was the father of Tannis Lee. Father-in-law to Roy Lee and 
grandfather to Corey and Katrina and Zach, as well as the father of Matthew, Tannis and Matthew are siblings, uh, and father-in-law to Colleen Craker, and grandfather of Carson, Olivia, and Hannah. Helen Rumpel, born on June 19th, 1925, passed away July 16th, 2021, at the age of 96. Helena was the mother of Brian Rumpel and mother-in-law of Tammy. Grayson Alexander J. Trapp. Born on June 11th, 2018, passed away September 9th, 2021, at the age of three. Was the grandson of Elaine Track and Eldon Reimer. Brian Dirksen, born November 19th, 1947, and passed away on September 12th, 2021. The husband of Betty and father of Heather and Lisa, uncle of Daryl Dick, um, and friends of many at Sterling, a longtime member at Sterling for 29 years. Abe Penner, husband of Shirley, father and grandfather, born March 27th, 1930, passed away September 17th, 2021, the age of 91. Joe Taves, born June 4th, 1931, died on September 18th, 2021, at age 90. Joe lived in Regina, but he was still a member at Sterling and attended here for many years. And uh, to give you some context, he was also Alf Lowen's youth leader. John Fraze, or Froze. Kennedy Fraze's grandfather, passed away at the age of 96 on October 30th, 2021. Henry Stace, January 31, 1927, passed away on November 11, 2021, at the age of 94. Uncle of Rick and Alpha. Betty Ducharme, born July 13, 1931, and passed away November 13, 2021, at the age of 90. Betty was the mother of Louise Friesen and mother-in-law to Kate Friesen. And lastly, only because it is most recently, Sandra or Sandy Lee Feldkamp, born January 12, 1946, and passed away November 14, 2021, at the age of 75. She was the beloved sister of Don Parks, and sister-in-law of Lynn Parks. Let's pause for prayer. Our God, our lives, our families, our community, and our world are not the same without those who have passed away, who have gone before us. These folks who we have grieved the losses of, who we have mourned together, we have given into your care. We have loved them. They have loved us. And we miss them. And God, we trust that they are in your eternal and loving care. And that death is not the end. But that in you we have resurrection life. And that will mean that we will see each other again. God, I pray that you would take our losses and that you would carry us through. And God, I pray that we would learn to carry one another's burdens, the losses that we experience. We thank you for the lives of those who have passed away and pray that we would 
be reminded of the fragility of life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Crystal is going to play a piece on the piano, and we're going to invite you, if you would like to come and light a candle uh, for someone who was mentioned, or just for anybody else. We'll just invite you to come around this way. In the front here, there are some matches so that we're not all touching the same candles. You could take a long match, you could light it in the candle, light one of those candles, and then put the, the match into this I don't know if it's a bowl or what it is, but into that thing. <laughs> I think when you come up, you'll see. Um, or we just invite you to, to reflect as you hear the music, uh, to pray. Uh, and after the song is finished and everybody who wants to has come, uh, then we will enter into our sharing time.
Thank you for sharing. Our final song is When Peace Like a River.